Still looking at Gaussian elimination here, and now we're going to look at a system of linear equations with no solution at all. So here we have the equation of three planes here, and like I said, it's going to have no solution. So it's, it's going to end up looking a bit like this. You can see these two planes meet, these two planes meet, these two planes meet, but there's no place where all three planes meet. Now, I could go through a whole series of uh, Gaussian elimination here, but I'm just going to show you what the end result looks like when I do go through the Gaussian elimination. So if you put it into an augmented matrix and go through all of your steps, you eventually end up in this situation here. Now, if I write this final line as an equation, it really says 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 2. That's a contradiction, right? Because that's just 0. 0 equals 2. That cannot be true. That's a contradiction. So what we're saying is there's no solution. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you could have no solution, so it's important to think about it for a second. Now, if you investigate each of these planes in turn, you'll see that none of them are uh, parallel. There's none that share a normal vector. If they were all parallel, that would make sense that there was no solution because none of them are even touching each other. The fact that they're not parallel means that at some place, each plane intersects on a line. And another place, this, they intersect on a line. And another place, they intersect on a line. So that's our um, geometric interpretation of this. This is our geometric interpretation of this. There is one more. If two of them were parallel and the other one wasn't parallel to them, you'd end up in a situation with two parallel ones and then one kind of passing through them in some way. And again, there's no solution there. There's no place. There's no line or no point where all three of them are meeting. Now, if you're very comfortable with Gaussian elimination, you can stop the video here. There's nothing more to see. If, however, you would like to see me solve this using Gaussian elimination and get to this final stage, then stick around because that's what I'm going to do now. So I've put all that information into an augmented matrix. Now, the first step is to make this a zero and this a zero, but actually I'm going to do something first. I'm going to divide this one by a half or multiply it by a half because then that'll be a one and I'll be able to use that one to subtract from there and there. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. We've taken our first row, multiplied by a half, and all of these values get halved. And you can see that here. Now, I'm going to get rid of this one and get rid of this one, turn them into zeros uh, by, mul by subtracting row one from both of them. All right, so you can now see that I've ended up in this horrible situation with fractions everywhere. Uh, so in the next step, I'm going to take these rows, row two and row three, and multiply them by a factor of themselves uh, or sorry, multiply them by a scalar so that that becomes the number one and that becomes the number one. Now, in order to do that, negative three over two times the reciprocal, two over three, is going to give me one. And uh, multiplying this by the reciprocal of nine over two, which is two over nine, will give me a one there as well. And you can see this is where we end up. Uh, now, look here, look here. Now, that's interesting, right? If I subtract that from that, I'm going to get zero here and a zero here, but I'm not going to get a zero there. All right, so let's subtract uh, row two, for, uh, row two from row three in our next step, and we're going to end up about here. And we're here, and this is the important bit. That's the contradiction. Therefore, there is no solution to this uh, Gaussian elimination problem. All right, um, that's it.